Good morning, guys. JJ here, and I hope you're all doing well. Now, I'm a firm believer that going for a good bushwalk is really good for the soul. I haven't been out in the bush for a little while, so I thought I'd make a spontaneous trip down to the Kurungai National Park just outside of Sydney, hit the tracks, get out into the bush, and so far, I think I made a pretty good decision. How beautiful and clean is this water? There's some huge tadpoles in there. This first little track I've come down is called the American Bay Track. And I think at the end, I'll be overlooking the Hawkesbury. It's so serene down here with this creek flowing. You can hear the birds, the frogs in the background. The wildflowers have just started blooming too. So they look amazing. There's like yellows, whites, pinks, purples. They're all really little flowers. So it's kind of hard to get on camera, but they're just beautiful. This is awesome. Uh oh, don't like the looks of this. Bummer. But I think despite the fact that the rest of the track is closed, I'm still where I want to be. This is my first time in Kurungai, or at least that I can recall. So it's cool we'll be able to explore it a bit together. And what's also cool is how much untouched bushland there is so close to Sydney, Australia's biggest city. I knew this place existed, but I never realized it was so expansive, so big. And I'm already thoroughly enjoying my day out here. So the plants here in Kurungai are more or less exactly the same as the ones I'd find back home on the central coast. And when I was a bit younger, I actually learned about how the Aboriginal people of the area use these plants for medicine, food, shelter, and other practical uses. And it's pretty cool checking out these plants and knowing that I could probably survive a couple of days in the bush if I needed to. So this one's a Banksia. You can use the nectar from this guy to make a bush version of Red Bull. This one's a stringy bark. You can use the tougher bark on the inside to make rope. This one's a bloodwood, and the sap from this one actually has antibacterial, antifungal, and antiseptic properties. So pretty good if you've got an open wound. This is a scribbly gum, type of eucalyptus. These scribbles all through the bark are actually made by a moth larvae. And if you're ever out in the bush on a really hot day and you find one of these smooth bark gum trees, like the scribbly gum, just give it a big cuddle. It's always really cool to the touch, so it'll cool your body temperature down. This one's a cone stick, and it's got really strong yet flexible wood. So a pretty good option if you want to try and make a shelter. It's pretty interesting stuff. So if you want to learn more about it, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I can make another video. So I don't know if you guys have noticed today that a lot of the shots are looking a bit less GoPro-y. And that's because I'm not vlogging with my GoPro today, which is a nice change. The guys at Nikon have just sent me out a camera to try, which is a Nikon Z50 mirrorless camera. And basically they want me to put it through its paces, take heaps of photos, video, and I thought I'd even try it out as a vlog setup. So far, I'm pretty impressed. Let me know if you guys have noticed a big difference. A majority of the footage I'm filming today is on the Z50, but unfortunately I do only have one battery, so I am having to kind of constantly stop and recharge it to try and get as much as I can out of the camera. But yeah, for such a tiny little camera and mirrorless, my first time using mirrorless, I'm pretty stoked on how good this camera is. It's a shame I've got to give it back soon. Not again. I swear this happens to me a lot. So there was a couple of tracks today that I was really keen to check out because some of the beaches here in Kurungai you can only access by foot. So I thought that'd be pretty cool. They'd be pretty secluded, but it pays to do your research because I've just done some backburning. So a lot of the tracks are closed. Backburning is like a controlled fire they do to prevent a bigger fire coming through during the fire season. But it does make the track somewhat unsafe to walk. So I guess I'll do my research next time and then come back and check out those beaches. become shorts. Plan B because the other tracks are closed. A whole lot of stairs. Uh, I instantly regret this. 
and a ladder. <sighs> Down I go. All right, so I'm all the way down the bottom now, and I mean all the way down the bottom. Check these cliffs out. It is definitely gonna be a hard slog getting back up. And down the bottom here, they've got like these old army barracks, which is kind of cool, like I'm standing on right now. It's these old concrete buildings that were used during World War II. And from down here, I can give you a bit more of a perspective of Kurungai's location in the grand scheme of things. So that behind me there, that's Baranjoey Lighthouse. That's part of the Northern beaches of Sydney. And then if we turn around here, whoa, there. That's Lion Island, and then you go over this way, that's the central coast, where I just came from. So as the crow flies, the two places aren't that far away from each other, but because I had to drive all the way around the Hawkesbury River, it took about an hour and a half to get here from Gosford on the central coast. Now I'm gonna give you two fun facts that I know about this place. Number one, Kurungai is actually the second oldest national park in Australia. And number two, over there, that's Palm Beach, and that's where Home and Away is filmed. Home and away. And you know what? I reckon this is a pretty good spot to stop, have some lunch before trying to conquer those stairs going all the way back up the top again. Lunch of champions. All right, break time's over. Time to conquer these stairs. Good time to let the battery recharge as well because I keep running it low. I'll let you know when I'm at the top, if I make it to the top. 452, 453, 454, 55, 56. 476 steps. Dead. Now let's check out this other lookout from a higher vantage point. This is West Head's lookout. Pretty decent view. I wouldn't mind checking out the lighthouse later if I've got a bit of time, but because it's a peninsula, I'm gonna have to drive it all the way around. See how we go. One of the hardest things about filming in the bush is you've got the dappled sunlight coming through the trees, so you've always got a blotchy face <laughs> with dark shadows and bright highlights. But I've just made it to the highest point here in Kurungai, and I can see all the way to Sydney from here. It's unreal. but it's more about being here, man, because through the lens, I cannot do this place justice. Hey guys, so I'm back home now. The day honestly escaped me. I'm not gonna act like that's the first time that's happened. I really gotta get better at grasping the concept of a day trip because so often I'll try and cram so many things into one day and then I just run out of time to see all the things I wanted to see and do all the things that I wanted to do, which is exactly what happened today. I didn't get to go to the lighthouse and I did go searching for a hidden waterfall, which remains hidden. Now the next spot I want to get to is a little bit off the beaten track. Basically, I'm gonna to have to get my feet wet if I want to get there. Hope no one steals my shoes. Ooh, that's a bit fresh. But it just gives me something to look forward to next time I head out there. The last part of the day, I was really battling with this battery as well. The only way I could charge it was while it was in the camera. And of course I couldn't use it at that time. So I kept taking like longer and longer breaks, which probably didn't help my case. So I think next time, if I get an opportunity like this to test out a camera, I need to ask Nikon really nicely for an extra battery. But all in all, it was still a really good day. I think this is one of the first vlogs that I've ever done that didn't actually feature any animals. So. I hope you guys still enjoyed it. I did look at camping down there, so I could spend a couple of days, but the campground within the national park was closed, probably due to that back burning. But I guess it's not too far away to head back out there and tick those things off. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm keen to keep on getting out there, exploring close to home. If you aren't part of the family already, subscribe down below, hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for letting me ramble on, and I'll see you in the next one.